Now, we will discuss first the arteria ng Katipunan. And of course, if we are going to look into a short background of the person who wrote the Cartilia ng Pakatipunan, it was written by Emilio Jacinto. And he was actually an orphan. Uh, he wa his parents were Mariano Jacinto and Josefa Dizon, but he was orphaned on a very young age. Although he was orphaned, he was actually intelligent. That's why his uncle, Jose Dizon, who was one of the founders of the Katipunan, sent him to school, particularly to Colegio de San Juan de Letran and the University of Santo Tomas to study law. Now, he was a free law student at the age of 19 when he joined the Katipunan in 1894. And there in Katipunan, he occupied several positions there. He was considered as fiscal of the Supreme Council. He was secretary of the Katipunan. And he was even the editor of the newspaper of the Katipunan known as Kalayan. That's why his friend, uh, Andres Bonifacio, considered him or dubbed him as uh, the soul and brains of the Katipunan. Try to remember also that the Katipunan was a secret organization or it was uh, a secret society that's why even the newspaper uh, the kalayaan needs to be hidden from the scrutiny of the spaniards that's why what they did was they held office in a secret place particularly in the house of pio valenzuela in calia la Vesares. and although they have the office there that could not not that that is not easy to be identified because what they did was they changed the deadline, the date line of the newspaper to Yokohama, which means that it seems that the newspaper was published in Yokohama. And instead of listing the name of Emilio Jacinto there as the editor, they listed the name of Marcelo H. Del Pilar to mislead the Spanish authorities. Now, among those things made by Jacinto was that he was able to write the Pahayag or the Manifesto, which was published in the first and only issue of the Kalayaan, meaning there was only one issue of the Kalayaan. It was not, the first issue was not supplemented by another issue because it was discovered. Uh, and when it was discovered, when the Katipunan was discovered, then that's the beginning of the Philippine Revolution wherein one of the consequences of the discovery of the Katipunan is, of course, the cry of Balintawak or the cry of Bugadlawin. And when all things were not really becoming okay, then there was a pressure for Andres Bonifacio to unite the Magdalo and the Magdiwang faction of the Katipunan. That's why there is a Tejeros Convention or Assembly. And the result of the Tejeros assembly was uh, was very bad on the part of Bonifacio because he was not elected as the president. And at the end, when he was elected as uh, Secretary of Interior, his qualification was also questioned by Daniel Terona. That's why what happened after that was uh, Bonifacio annulled the result of the proceedings of the Tejeros Convention, which resulted to him being declared as a traitor by Emilio Aguinaldo. That's why on May 10, 1897, Andres Bonifacio was sentenced to die for being a traitor to the very Katipunan that he founded and to the very revolution that he started. Meaning he was a traitor to his own organization. He was a traitor to his own a cause. Now, now, even though, uh, even though uh, Andres Bonifacio was killed, uh, Emilio Jacinto became or remained loyal to him and faithful to the Katipunan cause. That's why, even though there was an invitation to Emilio, uh, yeah, there was an invitation from Emilio Aguinaldo to join in his new de facto revolutionary government, uh, Emilio Jacinto turned down the invitation. Now. To give also honor to 
uh, the death or to Andres Bonifacio, who was his friend, and to his death, uh, Emilio Jacinto wrote a la patria or to my fatherland using his pen name Dimas Ila. Now, uh, Emilio Jacinto wrote this in a second language, which is Spanish, uh, because he would usually write in Tagalog, but this time he wrote in Spanish and uh, his masterpiece brims with patriotic sincerity, but it was even dubbed to be equal to the nobility and loftiness of thought of Rizal's ultimo adios. Now, of course, uh, you know, life is not always certain uh, in, a, in a battle, in a bloody encounter in Laguna. Emilio Jacinto was seriously injured. That's why he died at the age of 24 on April 16, 1899. Now, among the writings made by Emilio Jacinto, the Cartilia ng Katipunan serves as the Katipunan Ethics Code, meaning it was the one that serves as a guide for the Katipuneros during the time that the Katipunan was still a secret organization. Now, of course, when Andres Bonifacio founded the Katipunan, he wanted to formulate a set or a code of conduct that would be that would be followed by the Katipuneros. Uh, he wrote the Decalogo ng Katipunan. However, when he was able to read the Cartilia written by Jacinto, Andres Bonifacio decided that the Cartilia was more superior than the Decalogue. That's why he used the Cartilia as the primer, official primer of the Katipunan. Now this time, we're going to compare the two, the Cartilia ng Katipunan and the Decalogue. Now if we are going to compare the two, the Cartilia was longer, more literary, and more philosophical than the Decalogue. Okay, from the word Decalogue, meaning 10. Uh, that's why, uh, or Deca, which means 10. That's, that's why Cartilia was longer because what could be seen only on the Decalogue are 10 points that deals with one's responsibility to God, country, family, neighbor, and even the responsibility that he had to Katipunan. It also introduces Andres Bonifacio himself, meaning Bonifacio even included an idea or a thing about him so that the Katipuneros may know about him. That's the content of the Decalogue. And if we're going to look into it also, the Decalogue spoke of honor, charity, and self-sacrifice. But apart from those values mentioned in the Decalogue, it warns that anybody who would disobey and become traitor to the Katipunan would have a severe penalty. Meaning there was a warning or, the, yeah, there was a warning in the Decalogue to those people who would be, who would be considered as traitor and disobedient to the cause of the Katipunan. Well, in the case of the Cartilia, it presents a concept, or it presents the concept of virtuous living as lessons for self-reflection rather than as direct prescriptions. Meaning, it does not, there, there are, uh, vert, I mean, there are virtues or virtues that needs to be followed by members of the Katipunan. But those virtues are there for a member to reflect, uh, for self-reflection. But it doesn't mean that it is being prescribed for them to follow. Now, the Cartilia even emphasizes that it's the internal qualifications of man that made him great, not the external qualification. It's like saying that even though how beautiful or handsome you are, if you have a bad attitude or a bad behavior, still that would not make you great therefore the greatness of a particular person or the greatness of an individual would would, would depend on the the internal beauty or the internal or the behavior or the attitude that he is showing to other people now the cartilia was considered to be the best known of all the katipunan texts why because it was the only document that was that was printed by the Katipunan before August 1896, 
And that was the only document that still exists during that time, or that, that, that still exists even until now. The other documents were already lost. Now, the first reference of the Cartilia was in the minutes of the Supreme Assembly that was held on December 18, 95. Now, at first, before December 18, 95, it was at first an address or a speech to those candidates who wants to join the, the Katipunan. It's like an initiation speech given to those who wants to join the Katipunan during the time that the Katipunan was still confined to Manila, meaning the membership are, or the, the members could just be found within Manila. Now, however, when it, be, it was, when the Katipunan grew into a society or an association that includes other provinces of the Republic, then it became a part of the ritual. Now, what was that ritual? Of course, you are going to read the content of the Cartilia. Then if you are, or if you agree with the content of the Cartilia, then you need to sign a document or sign on that. Or It's like an application. There is an, the, the Cartilia is like a form of application wherein if you agree with those things mentioned in the application or in the agreement, then that's the time that you are going to sign it okay now if we are going to look into the structure of the cartilia the structure actually resembles the declaration used in masonic lodges of manila and if you are going to check the uh, preamble the preamble actually echoes the masonic lodges documents purpose okay now again it is an initiation ensured that candidates fully understood the association's objectives before joining so that they might not later repent meaning they should check all those things mentioned there so that at the end of the day they will not regret joining the katipunan now as you can see there on the first part in order that all who want to enter this association may have a full understanding and knowledge of its guiding principles and main teachings it is necessary to make these things known to them so that they will not tomorrow or the next day regret and so that they may perform their duties wholeheartedly. That's why it's like, okay, check this, read this, understand what's the content of this. If you agree, then you join. If you don't agree, then better not join because there are so many things that should be done in this association. Now, of course, you can see there the object and pursued by the association that is to unite eh, the hearts and minds of the Tagalogs by means of an inviolable oath. The foremost rules, there were two foremost rules in the Katipunan. First is true love of the native land and genuine compassion for one another. It means that you should give true love to our country and we should be compassionate to other people. Now, this is like saying that we need to be compassionate because everybody are all are equal and true brothers and sisters there is no poor there is no rich there is no educated there is no uneducated or there is no ignorant or wise everybody are considered to be equal now if you wanted to join the association all you need to do is you are forced to renounce disorderly habits and after renouncing all these orderly habits, you need to submit yourself to the command of the Katipunan. Try to remember that a member should act to be noble or should have a noble and clean living. Because if you your acts are contrary to noble and clean living, then that is not acceptable in the organization. That's why... The organization would always, or the association would always check. Uh, there is what we call searching investigation to those who wants to become members. Now, there was also a warning here that if you want merely, if you're an applicant and you want only to know the secrets of the organization and so that you could, you could... Uh, uh, sell them to other to the Spanish authorities, then you should not proceed because there were people watching over you and they know your intentions 
And if they if they know that you are just doing this because you want to get information from the association, then that that thing defeats uh, penalty for a traitor. Now it the, the association demand work. Uh, only actions are demanded and esteemed. Because if you are just fond of talking and talking without doing an action, then you should not join because that is not uh, what is being needed from you. Why? Because if you become a member of the association, try to remember that your duty there is very hard. Why? Because uh, you are going to protect the people. You are going to protect the oppressed and you are going to fight those who are oppressing the people. That's why you should do that responsibility willingly. Uh, and any willful evasion of duty would be uh, would benefit a terrible punishment. Now, what if the, the one who joins wanted only to have financial support from the organization? Now, he should not join also because uh, he will not gain anything from the association, but instead he will be encountering weighty tasks. And that's the task, as I mentioned a while ago, is to protect the oppressed and the relentless fight against all that is evil. That's why you would not have a happy life being a member of the association, but instead you would have a vexatious life. Now, it also emphasizes that since there you would not gain anything from the association, it emphasizes also that the association needs money. That's why if you want to join, huh, you are going to pay an entrance or what we call a membership fee. And that membership fee may uh, that, that membership fee is equivalent to one peso and every month you are going to renew your membership by paying 12 and a half centavos or centimos, which means that instead of you gaining something from the association, it's actually the association that will be asking your help for the association to continue. Now, it states, the Cartilia states that if all these things were already known to the, the aspiring member, then he should uplift his mind and know the following virtues. Primary goal of the Katipunan to defend those people who are oppressed and fight the oppressor. And this was one also of the teachings of the Katipunan that everybody should know. That's why it mentions there that the purpose of the Katipunan is just not just to, to make life easy or not just or chill, chill, chill thing, but it's actually a, a life of hard work. Now, there were so many other things there. Like, for example, your life must be dedicated for a great cause. Because, because if there's no purpose, if your life doesn't have purpose, then it's like a tree without a shade. Now, it's like also a poisonous weed we're in. Uh, the, the, the point there is, there must be a purpose for everything that you are doing, particularly your life. Another one, good deed uh, lacks virtue if it springs from desire for personal profit and not from sincere desire to do good. Now, in all those things that you do, uh, all those, if you want to have your, if you want to consider your, your deeds as good, then it must spring not from your personal profit but it must spring from a personal desire to do good. And which means that if you would want to help another person, then just help without having it full covered by the media or help without telling anyone that you are helping. Now, it means that you should love one's fellow men because by loving one's fellow men, then there is true charity. But how could you get that idea of true charity? when you act based on compassion. Therefore, we should love other people and we should show compassion to those people, particularly to those people who need. Because if we go show compassion to those people who need, then there is what we call true charity. Now, it also repeats the idea that everybody is equal on the next uh, sentence there. Be your, your skin is dark or pale, all are equal. 
B U R. Uh, no one is considered to be superior in terms of knowledge, wealth, and beauty because everybody are considered to be a human being. Now, a noble a person who has noble character honors uh, uh, values honor above self interest. Meaning, if you want to consider yourself as a person of noble character, then you should have or you should be an honorable man. But if you are not, if you have, if you have an ignoble character, if what is most important to you is your self interest. Now, that, try to remember also that uh, an honorable man's word is the band that he that is considered to be uh, tied for a particular person. Now, don't waste time because time lost. May uh, I mean the wealth you may lost. May be recovered, but the time that was lost will be lost forever. Okay. Now, there are other important things also here. Okay. Now, an intelligent man is he who takes care of everything he says and keeps quiet about what must be kept secret. Now, that's an intelligent man, meaning you should you should think twice or thrice before you say something, and you should make sure that what you are saying cannot hurt hurt other people. And if there is a secret that must be kept, then you should know how to keep secret. This is because, uh, try to understand that the Katipunan is a secret organization. Therefore, all the secrets of the Katipunan might, must be kept by those people who are considered to be part of the Katipunan. Okay, now there are things here like uh, along the thorny path of life, the man leads the way and his wife and children follow. Now this is like the same also with the organization there is a leader that's that's that that guides the the followers in it the leader ways goes in the way of perdition meaning if the the way wherein the leader is following is also wrong then all those followers that he got would also commit mistakes also now do not regard the woman as a mere plaything because these women are considered to be helpmate and partners of men in hardships of existence now, if they have, if women do have weaknesses, then we should give regard to those weaknesses of women because try to remember that uh, you have also a mother who brought you into the world and nurtured your infancy. And this is uh, why, uh, this is the part of the criteria wherein uh, it gives honor to women as partner and helpmate of men. Apart from that, of course, uh, how... The Cartilia wanted to protect the uh, the wife, the women, like the wife, the daughter, and sister, which is, which states that uh, if you don't want something bad to be done to your wife, daughter, and sister, then do not do something bad also to others' wife, daughter, and sister. Now, it also I try to look also in that particular part. It explains the worth of a man. Now, a man's worth. Could not be seen from becoming or being a king or having a high nose, meaning biskantas ilong mo. That's not the indicator of a man's worth or even how white your uh, face is, or even if you are a priest or a representative of God, because a true man's worth could be seen on how he behaves decently, how truthful he is to his word how he honors dignity, how he got dignity and honor, and this man is not an oppressor and does not protect oppressors, and he does not know also, uh, and he knows how to cherish and look after the land of his birth. Meaning, a noble man is somebody who gives honor or protect and love his own country. Now, those are the things mentioned in the criteria ng Katipunan, and as mentioned there also, that if of all of these teachings, if all of these doctrines would be followed by those members and would be spread throughout the archipelago, then there is the brilliant sun of beloved liberty that would shine on these poor islands, which means that we will be able to attain liberty or freedom. It sheds its Sweet light upon a united race, a people in everlasting happiness, then the lives lost, the struggle and the suffering will have been more than recompensed. If we will be able to see someday the freedom and the liberty that we are aspiring for as 
members of the Katipunan, according to the criteria, then we could see uh, a race or a group of people that is on everlasting happiness. If everybody is happy, then all those who died, all those who struggle in order to attain this freedom or liberty, their struggle and the life that they lost would be repaid or recompensed. Okay? Now, that's the main purpose of the Cartilia ng Katipunan.